What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Sound Attack once again, and you guys asked for it, so I'm bringing you another Linux tutorial. Linux gaming tutorial? I don't know. Apparently, I just do random stuff for my YouTube channel. That being said, did you know that Xbox One S and Xbox One X controllers work wirelessly with Ubuntu? Pretty much right out of the box. There's only one thing you have to do, pretty much, and we're going to go over that right after this. Welcome back. So it's pretty exciting because if you're switching or swapping from Windows to, of course, Linux right now, we finally have the option, which you can check out up here, to run Windows-only games, at least some of them or a lot of them, in Linux. And you can also use your Xbox One controller to play them. Now, the caveat is, is that it has to be an Xbox One S or Xbox One X controller because these controllers actually support Wi-Fi. The Microsoft dongle for the proprietary wireless solution that Microsoft previously used doesn't work with Linux. So the only way you're gonna be able to get to connect is by using a controller that Microsoft implemented a basic Bluetooth technology into, which I didn't even know that Microsoft did that until I started trying to get this to work. Now, the next thing you'll need is basically a Bluetooth device, and you can either order a dongle off of Amazon, which I'll link a couple down in the description below, or your motherboard might actually have one built in. The motherboard I'm using in particular is the AB350N, AB350N ITX Gaming Wi-Fi, so Wi-Fi includes Bluetooth. And all I really had to do was install Ubuntu, and it detected the controller actually right away. To get it to detect the controller, all you gotta do is basically turn it on and then hold the bottom button here until it starts flashing and then open the Bluetooth settings menu in Ubuntu, which we'll get into right now. All right, so if you actually want to get this working, your Bluetooth menu should be up here. Most likely, it will be detected automatically, uh, meaning that the drivers for a majority of these Bluetooth devices are baked into Ubuntu. However, there might be a couple things you have to do outside of that. I unfortunately can't give you a tutorial on every single one, so start listing down below, of course, Bluetooth devices that you find work out of the box and Bluetooth devices that you find don't work out of the box. This is also similar with the Wi-Fi connections as well, but if you're on Ubuntu 18.04 and you use the Gigabyte motherboard here and you have the Wi-Fi on there, it'll just already be ready to go. You'll click down on the on and then click the Bluetooth settings. Now, what's really interesting about this is it will find the Xbox wireless controller right away. However, the light will never go solid on the Xbox controller and stay connected. So what you'll notice is if you do it without the next step that we're about to show you, it'll basically just connect and then it'll go back and stop this and stop connecting. And then the blue or the white light on the top of your controller will actually just keep blinking slowly. As you can see now though, it's actually connected on the screen as well. To do this, all you really have to do is open terminal and I'll put the commands down in the description below because there's not a lot of how to's for this, which was a little uh, kind of frustrating. And I actually just found the answer on an Ubuntu forum and it doesn't even have any like plus one ups. So you do need to, to make sure that you can run this install sys uh, utilities. And so you'll just copy this command and paste it into your terminal, type in the password for your admin account and press enter. As you can see, I already have it installed. Yours will go through the install process and over here it should say one newly installed. Once that's complete, you'll need to edit a sysconfig file. And to do that, we're just gonna do sudo nano, and right click here and edit this file, this sysconfig file, and enter in this module slash Bluetooth slash parameters slash disable underscore ERTM equals one. Now I like to use nano because it's really easy for tutorials because you, if you get lost in here, I don't have to explain to you to type uh, colon and then Q and all of that sort of thing like I would with V. However, I am very, very, very 
understanding of the fact that V is going to have a lot more robustness as an editor, but we don't really need that for this how-to, so just go ahead and use Nano. It should be built into 18.04 if you're using it, and I believe all the way back to 16.04 as well, so no problems there. Once you've done this, you will press Control X to exit. It'll ask you if you want to save. You type Y for yes and press enter, and then you're good to go. Once you've completed that, you can just reboot, so you will have to come up to the power and then click the power and then click restart. And then once you come back in, you can just go ahead and reconnect your Xbox controller by holding the top until it starts flashing. And then turning the Wi-Fi on, or sorry, Bluetooth on, just as an example here. You should see it and then it'll connect it right away. Pretty simple stuff. Now, to prove to you guys that it works, we'll go ahead and open Steam here. It's pretty freaking awesome. And in my library, I actually have, I believe it's Monster Hunter World already installed. So we'll just go ahead and scroll down to that. Click play. And as you can see here, the controller is pretty much controlling the game at this point. Up and down and all that's working. We're going to click start game. And all of the default patterns that you would see on Xbox for this particular game transfer right over. So there's no need to go mapping anything or doing anything like that. It's pretty much just plug and play except for that one little text file edit that you got to do. And uh, we are in Monster Hunter World. Now one of the things I noticed about Monster Hunter World is very, very CPU intensive and because it does have to repackage that API, it is extra CPU intensive on Ubuntu. We are currently running on a Ryzen 7 2700 and it takes a little bit before it kind of um, steadies out in the frame rate. And you can notice there's still a little bit of hitching and stuff like that. I think we're pretty high up in... Uh, settings as well so if we go into options and head over to oh you have to do that outside the game i forgot about that okay so isn't that exciting not only can you now play windows only games like monster hunter world in ubuntu but you can pretty much play it exactly like you would on windows with an xbox one controller or just like an xbox with an xbox one controller hmm why do we pay so much money for all those operating systems? I don't know. Come join me on Linux and let's discover new things together as it pertains to gaming. Because my only experience with Linux up till now has always been just server work and Ubuntu server headless with, with no GUI. So uh, this is fun. I'm, I'm enjoying it. I hope you guys are enjoying it along with me. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. And I'll see you next Tuesday.